everybody, how's it going? My name is Meg Moonbeam and welcome back to my channel. Today is a very special video because today I'm going to be talking about the full moon in Scorpio that is going to be happening on April 23rd, 2024. And every year we have a full moon in Scorpio. We have a full moon in each of the signs every year annually, but this is not a typical full moon in Scorpio. It is very, very intense, very, very powerful, and something that you're going to want to be aware of to utilize its energies to the best of your abilities to be in natural alignment with this very powerful full moon. So before I get into it, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my Meg Moonbeam YouTube and Rumble channel. I've got all my links in the description box of this video. I do offer personal astrology consultations that are available in the description box as well at consultations.beyondmystic.net. And this week as I'm filming this video, the last week of April is the last week of the early bird pricing for my Sacred England retreat that I'm hosting with my husband Jens, where we're traveling all over Southern uh, uh, British sacred sites. We're going to be spending time together in July 2024 with like-minded soul family, going to different sacred sites, doing daily ceremonies, teachings, and once-in-a-lifetime experiences. So check out the Sacred England retreat in the link below as well. And also, last little housekeeping thing is I just started my Astrology Level 2 on the Beyond Mystic Academy that you can also check out at the link description box below. If you'd like to learn about astrology, go deeper into this mystical, fantastical art, I would love to be your guide and teacher. So check that out. Okay, now it's time to talk about this full moon in Scorpio. And you guys, this is not a normal full moon. I know as an astrologer, I'm always saying, oh my God, this is crazy. We got this crazy aspect, this crazy full moon. It's so intense, it's so powerful. This full moon in Scorpio is not a drill, okay? This is not a normal full moon in Scorpio, you guys. This is an extra potent, extra powerful, extra creepy, deepy, and weird full moon, if you will. And as you can see, I've got my witch hat on, I've got my raven wing, I've got my vampire look, because for those of you who don't know, I actually am a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio sun with my rising at a Scorpio degree, and I'm born Pluto and Scorpio generation. For So who better to share with you about this full moon in Scorpio than yours truly? I am a Scorpio, and I feel like Scorpio is one of the most misunderstood signs in astrology that gets a really bad rap. And I understand it because Scorpio does rule the darkest aspects of life. Okay, but it is a very misunderstood sign that has a lot of very powerful, enlightening attributes to it. It's not all just dark and evil and villainous. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what this full moon in Scorpio means for the whole collective, and I'm also going to do little mini readings for each of the 12 sun, moon, and rising signs. So for the whole collective, this is an extremely not normal full moon, okay? Because literally just three days before the exact full moon in Scorpio on April 23rd, on April 20th, we had the biggest astrological conjunction of the year, the biggest astrological aspect of the year, which of course was the great Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus at 21 degrees of Taurus. So as we come into this full moon in Scorpio, we've still got Jupiter and Uranus conjunct. And we're still in the influence of that. And as I'm filming this video on Sunday, April 21st, it is the morning after the great Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And I don't know about you guys, but I woke up today feeling weird. There was an eerie feeling. There was a kind of very different feeling in the air. I was feeling as a psychic intuitive empath, like something very big has actually shifted for all of us in the collective since this conjunction we just had, which I know can sound very airy-fairy for me to say, but that's genuinely what I'm feeling. So let me know in the comments below if you're feeling a very big difference in the energy as well. So for all of us, 
that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus is about us really moving into the future. Uranus is a planet that rules the future and innovation and Jupiter expands whatever he's touching. And in the sign of Taurus, which is Uranus's fall position, has to do with nature, Mother Earth, our values and comforts and stabilities of life. So with that conjunction, which is also a kind of ingredient, if you will, in the cake of this full moon that we're working with, is we're moving past stagnation, we're moving past blocks, barriers, limiting beliefs that no longer serve us, literally from our whole lives up until this point. And we're stepping into the future and we're gonna see major innovations over the course of the rest of April, May, June, and the whole rest of 2024 in those Taurus ruled areas of life. Which, interesting that Taurus is the opposite sign to Scorpio, okay? So we've just had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus, which is going to innovate and bring into the future new ways in our financial system, our food supply, what we consider to be a value and comforts and stabilities of life. Then just a few days or a few days later, it's Mercury retrograde, sorry, I'm messing up my words. We've got this very powerful full moon in Scorpio, the opposite sign to Taurus. Taurus is our values. Scorpio is merging with others. Taurus rules what is mine what I own, and Scorpio is what I share, what I merge with, transcending the material. So also with that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, it's a very weird aspect because Uranus rules weirdness. So there can be some very weird things coming up for all of us in life, very weird themes, situations, personally and in the collective. And with this full moon in Scorpio, Scorpio deals with the shadow side of life. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, the shadow side, the creepy crawly, the hidden, the mysterious, secrets, sex, intimacy. All of these things are going to be themes during this full moon in Scorpio. But this full moon in Scorpio is also not normal, not just because we're literally still in the energy of that Jupiter Uranus conjunction but because this full moon in Scorpio, at the exact time of the full moon, the sun will be square Pluto. Pluto is the planet that is the ruler of Scorpio. So we've got sun square Pluto and Pluto square moon, which means we've got something in astrology called a T-square. So the sun and moon are in T-square towards Pluto. This is one of the harshest kind of aspects in astrology and Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio, is the ruler of the dark side of life and our shadows and crisis and drama. So this is, I'm going to be honest with you guys, a very dramatic, okay, and could even be crisis oriented full moon, okay. Scorpio also deals with emotional intensity and psychology. So there's a bunch of things that I want to say with this, but one of the takeaways I want you guys to take away from this full moon in Scorpio is it is really, really intense. Okay. Intense. There is a dark energy about it. The dark side of life with this full moon, the dark arts people, the elites that are losing their power, our own shadow sides want to come out and play. They are wanting attention at this time. They are wanting us to feed into them at this time. So one way we can work with this full moon in Scorpio instead of being like, oh my God, this is so freaky. It's full moon in Scorpio with a T-square and a Pluto. It's going to be the end of the world. It's going to be really dark and evil. Instead of going into that belief, let's work with this full moon proactively. And one of the ways we can proactively work with it is to do shadow work. Okay, Scorpio rules shadow work and the most intense forms of real deal healing. So with this full moon in Scorpio, T squared to Pluto, with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and Mars conjunct Neptune, Mars the other ruler of uh, Scorpio conjunct Neptune in his own sign of Pisces, spirituality and spiritual healing. This is an amazing full moon portal to release, to purge, to do real deal deep healing work. 
and Scorpio rules shamanism, Scorpio rules psychotherapy, spiritual psychotherapy, shadow work, you know, uh, what are those things called? Rage circles, you know, working with our intense emotions and processing them, accepting them and releasing them. Scorpio also rules trauma and crisis. So we may be feeling naturally around this full moon and also with a Mercury retrograde happening at the same time, we've only got Mercury retrograde until April 25th, but still during this full moon, there can be creepy crawly things, people, patterns, uh, traumas from our past that are coming up to the surface for us and that want to be worked with and want to be released at this time. So the number one thing I would say for each of us personally, the best way to work with this full moon in Scorpio is number one, be aware that it's really freaking intense and not to take anything personally that may be getting projected onto you. And know that if you are feeling really emotionally intense, that is totally normal with this energy. You're not going crazy. And also do healing work, do cleansing work, look at your shadow look within and be honest with yourself about what is it that you're in need of releasing and purging and cleansing at this time. This is one of the most powerful, if not the, be the best time of the year to release. Okay. I can't really think at the top of my head of any other major full moon this year that would it be a better one to do release work with. So definitely um, consider that. Okay, and you know, Scorpio rules release and releasing of toxicity and really intense things in astrology and full moons are of course our times of release. Also full moons are our times of illumination. So the hidden side of life in the collective and for each of us personally can be illuminated. There can be secrets, Scorpio rules secrets that are coming to the surface for many of us things that we have been repressing and holding inside even about ourselves, not just others, but about ourselves and our own shadow can be coming up. So I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little bit of a creepy full moon. Okay. But if you're a Scorpio sun, moon or rising like me, this has literally been our whole lives. Okay. So if you've got <laughs> the theme of our whole lives, intensity, crisis, secrets, release drama okay so if you have any scorpio friends around they would be really good allies at this time <laughs> to help you support through this process important to know that the moon is at fall position in scorpio grandmother moon does not like to be in the sign of scorpio so it is uncomfortable it is unstable it is uh emotionally intense and we just had, as I said, that Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which is also uncomfortable and kind of weird. So the energy going into, I'm going to say the whole next week is unstable and weird. There can be weird shadow stuff coming up at this time. Okay. With Uranus conjunct Jupiter at the exact time of this full moon. So important to be aware of that. Also, this full moon is going to be at four degrees. And in Nicholas Stojanovic's degree theory, four degrees is a cancer degree. Cancer rules home, family, emotional well-being, and our ancestors. So we can be having some intense situations or revelations, secrets being revealed around our homelands, our family, our family members, our parents, and our ancestors, and about our own emotions. You know, it can be coming up this week with this full moon in Scorpio, how possibly emotionally unstable some of us are or how there's actually a certain kind of emotion or belief uh, or something mentally psychologically that we're attached to that we're really feeding into that maybe isn't for our highest good to be holding on to right if you've got major anxiety or depression or emotional instability which those are all things that as a Scorpio with a lot of Scorpio in my chart, I've experienced those things all throughout my life. You know, it's important to do healing work around that. It's important to get to the source of why are there import, uh, very intense emotional or mental issues? Where does that come from? Right? How can we seek healing through that? So I think being 
reflective. I think taking it easy, not doing anything too crazy with this full moon in Scorpio is very important. I wouldn't go anywhere that's super crowded or super intense around this full moon in Scorpio because with that T square to Pluto, there's going to be some weird dark stuff coming up and we're already seeing it with kind of, you know, the situations in the Middle East, which I'm not an expert on. I'm not going to speak on that or put an opinion out on that because I'm not an expert on what's going on with the Middle East. But we have de definitely seen some tensions escalate within the last few days there. And that makes perfect sense with this full moon in Scorpio. T squared to Pluto because Scorpio also rules power and what we do with our power. So, and yeah, Spirit also wants me to say with this full moon, we're being invited to look at what do we do with our power? What are we doing with our energy? Are we feeding things that are good and uplifting to ourselves and humanity? Or are we doing things that are dark with our power? Are we being manipulative in any ways? Are we doing things that actually don't align for our highest good? So important to be uh, honest about that. Pluto is the dispositor of this full moon because it's the modern day ruler in T-square at this time. We've also got Mars, the traditional ruler of Scorpio, also a dispositor of this full moon and is sextile Jupiter, which is a very positive aspect, and conjunct Neptune, the planet of spirituality and compassion and creativity. So definitely doing spiritual healing, real deal healing is I think the best way to work with this full moon and to deal with the very intense energies and weird, even dark stuff that might be coming up in the collective. And I'm not trying to call anything in. I'm just reading the astrology for you guys. Okay. I don't want anything negative to happen, but this is where we could in the collective, you know, see some of those darker forces in life, try to do something, try to create something to really feed off of the fear of the whole collective. So it's very important to be discerning about what is actually real and what's not, what's actually a threat and what's not. And to lean on our spiritual guides, ancestors, uh, you know, to support us at this time, to pray with them, to meditate with them. And Scorpio rules dead people in particular. Okay, Scorpio rules mediumship. So this is also spirit wants me to say this full moon portal, a time where we can be like during Halloween. That's why I'm dressed like a witch here. We can be visited by our departed loved ones. It's a full moon where the veils are very thin. Scorpio is a very magical, mysterious, um, you know, spooky sign. And the veils are thin between us and the world to our ancestors. So we can connect to them, feel them a lot stronger than other times throughout the year. Okay, so that's what I have to share for the whole collective on this full moon in Scorpio. And now I'm going to talk about do little mini readings, mini prediction readings for each of the 12 signs, okay, for this full moon in Scorpio. Let's go through each of the sun, moon and rising signs to see what are the mini predictions for this full moon in Scorpio. Okay. So starting with the Aries sun, moon and risings, you guys are having this full moon and Scorpio, of course, in your eighth house of Scorpio, because you've got all the houses in alignment with their rulers. If you are an Aries in the solar astrology or rising or how we look at it in the moon as well. So Aries, this is really, really intense for you. You're having this full moon in your eighth house with transit Pluto in your 11th in square to the moon and the sun. So this is bringing up for you some very deep uh, shadow aspects and themes that you can be working with or releasing something that is a really big deal at this time. And for a lot of you Aries, there can even be really uncomfortable things coming up for you at this time to be released just in general because it's such a strong Scorpio energy for you having this full moon in your eighth house with a T-square to Pluto. You guys have just been getting totally activated in so many different ways, Aries, because we've had the eclipse season, you know, eclipses in your sign and the Mercury retrograde in your sign and now full moon in Scorpio in your eighth house. So I would highly suggest for you Aries, Sun, Moon and Risings 
doing shadow work, being honest with yourself about toxicity in your life. And with Pluto being in your 11th house in T-square, the 11th house rules friends and our group associations. So there could be major friendships that you're releasing at this time, group associations. 11th house can also be our hopes and dreams for the future. So there could be something major that you thought was a dream or a hope or a wish that actually needs to shift and change into something else and be released as well in regards to the future. Aries, we just had that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in your second house of Taurus, the opposite sign of Scorpio, and that's in your second house, which is the Taurus-ruled Aries of life. So some good news is, okay, even though you got full moon in Scorpio in your eighth house, super, super intense, you are going through with that a death and a major rebirth. Sorry, there's sounds where I am. I've just got family coming in and out of my house. Sorry, you guys. Um, this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in your second house is amazing, is very positive. This is bringing more money, new income streams, uh, more positive relationship to abundance, more enjoyments of life overall. And I'm hearing spirits say for you, Aries, that we need to sometimes close a door to have new ones open. And spirit is asking you, if you would like to, to reflect on what is the biggest block or thing that needs to be closed as a door in your life that you just know doesn't serve you anymore okay be honest with yourself work with that move forward clear it so that new doors can open because with that jupiter uranus in your second house the eclipses in your sign you guys are the stars of the show right now and we need you guys as leaders and in your confidence and bravery to help us move into this age of Aquarian, very positive future. So I love you, Aries. Hope that resonated with you and happy full moon. Okay, Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. So you guys are having this full moon in Scorpio happen in your seventh house. Holy guacamole. So the seventh house rules are committed relationships. So for some Taurus, sun, moon, and risings, there can be committed relationships coming to a completion point, there can be some breakups, there can be some termination of contracts. And remember you guys, full moon in Scorpio with a T-square to Pluto is dramatic, okay? So this is some really dramatic things that can be coming up for you with relationships in your life. Uh, Taurus, it's very honest for you with this full moon, very honest, very important for you with this full moon to be honest about the people that are around you and are there people that are toxic? Scorpio can rule toxicity and releasing toxicity. Are there people that just don't make you feel good, whether that's in love or business as clients, you know, committed relationships that it's time to release? We've got Pluto conjunct your midheaven right now, which is extremely powerful stuff. But you guys are the only sign with Pluto right at the top of your chart right now, ever since Pluto has moved into Aquarius. And the midheaven has to do with our legacy, success, and empowerment. So there could definitely be, for many Tauruses, with this full moon as well, some power struggles that are going on, some dramas with some people going on at the moment where they are triggered by you being in your empowerment and you being successful. So I'm hearing Spirit also say for you, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Risings, you want to be having people around you that help you be in your success that are proud of you and that don't diminish you or are jealous of you or are trying to ruin your success okay so important for Taurus is to be honest with who you've got around you the jupiter uranus conjunction that we just had Taurus, is, of course was in your first house so like the aries and the libras the signs that are having the eclipses uh, in their sign and we have that great conjunction of the year in Taurus. You guys are also kind of the stars of the show right now with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus, with Pluto conjunct your midheaven. You guys are in a very powerful position, okay? And you want to be, I just keep hearing spirits say, be really honest about who you have around you and why, what beliefs you have about yourself and why, because career, work, dreams for Tauruses. These are all things that the universe wants to give you major gifts, 
but we don't want to be blocking ourselves in any way because we have some weird toxicity in our life. So very life-changing events can be coming up for Tauruses with this full moon as well. Love you guys and hope that resonated. And now we move to the Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Risings. Happy full moon in Scorpio and Jupiter, Uranus conjunction. This full moon in Scorpio is going to be happening in your sixth house. And the sixth house has to do with our health, routines, day-to-day -day schedule, and work. So with this being a major release portal, with this full moon being in Scorpio, which is about cleansing and purging, and full moons to begin with are about cleansing and purging, and also illumination, Geminis, there can be endings coming in around your work, around your career. Some of you guys can be starting, sorry, ending new jobs, becoming aware of careers that you actually want to be doing. Also, any health or lifestyle routines or choices that don't serve you can be coming to a completion point at this time as well. Geminis, this is a fantastic full moon for you to be doing a cleanse or a detox to start one, to do one, if that resonates with you. Physical detox and cleansing work, it's fantastic for you guys, so I would highly suggest that. And also fantastic because the sixth house is Virgo, which can be cleanliness and cleaning, to do like a cleanup of your office space. The sixth house rules uh, your office, if you've got one outside your home or within your home, or just your general spaces in general. You can be feeling more like a Virgo during this full moon of wanting to be clean, wanting to detox, and there could be something prominent coming up with a pet for you at this time. We also had just had the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your 12th house, which is very, very spiritual. Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces, the sign associated with the 12th house. So there's a lot of spiritual activation, intuitive insights, very prophetic and profound dreams that you can also be having and utilizing with at this time. So I hope that resonated. Gemini's and I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Okay, now we move to the Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Risings. This full moon in Scorpio is going to be happening in your fifth house, which in astrology is the Leo ruled areas of life. I like to call the fifth house the fun house, okay, because the fifth house rules fun and play and creativity and our inner child and romance, but it is a full moon in Scorpio. So you are going through a release process of those areas of life that I just mentioned. The fifth house does rule our inner child. So, you know, it would be a good time for you cancers actually to do some inner child healing work. Also, fifth house rules romance and romantic partners, but not people that'll last in the long term. That's more the seventh house in Libra. So you could be releasing uh, suitors, boyfriends or girlfriends, partners, lovers that actually maybe don't serve you. Maybe there's like a toxic karmic relationship going on, especially with the south node that we have in Libra that we're all going through as a collective releasing karmic relationships this year. So Cancer, just be honest about your lovers, girlfriends, boyfriends. Like, is this something that is actually in alignment, is actually going to last in the long term or not? And you could be feeling really creative at this time, having the full moon in Scorpio in your eighth house sorry, in your fifth house, there is something very big that you will be releasing or realizing because Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, in a T-square to the moon and sun is in your eighth house of Scorpio. So again, as I'm saying for all of the signs, but in particular you guys, fantastic time to be doing some real deal healing. I just feel like inner child work, that kind of theme in particular for you guys would be fantastic with the full moon in your fifth house. And I hope that resonated what I said. Oh, don't want to forget to, almost forgot to say that the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus that we just had happened in your 11th house. And the 11th house is ruled by Uranus. It's the Aquarius house. So you guys are actually being blessed with that conjunction a lot more so than most of the other signs to be more open to the future. The 11th house rules the future. So there could be some very intense things coming up for you at this time with this full moon, but I think you more so than a lot of the other signs uh, are open to moving forward, innovation, change. You guys are also very psychically attuned to the future and what's actually gonna be coming up. 
over the next few years. So um, yeah, with that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your 11th house, that's a very positive influence, even though we've got Pluto in your eighth. Uh, it is overall very, very positive, and there's major blessings coming through trying to help you move into the future age of Aquarius. So be open to the blessings. Okay, Cancers, I hope what I said resonated, and I'm sending you guys lots and lots of love. Happy full moon. Leo, sun, moon, and risings, you guys are having this full moon in Scorpio in your fourth house. This is intense for you guys, okay? Because the fourth house is the bottom of the astrological chart. It is the lowest house. And yes, it rules home and family and ancestors, but it also rules our emotional well-being. So Leo's, you know, Scorpio is a water sign. The fourth house is associated with Cancer, a water sign. You guys can be feeling really emotionally intense with this full moon. And you guys may be crying more than usual. Uh, you are releasing a lot emotionally. And with Pluto in your seventh house in square to the moon and the sun, I think it would be really good to maybe reach out to a therapist or a friend or a healing arts professional that you trust. If there is something very intense coming up for you, Leo, Sun, Moon and Risings at this time, I could see a big theme for you guys is maybe you've had a recent death in the family. Uh, you know, fourth house rules family, Scorpio rules with death. Maybe there's been a big release or ending with a family or with a homeland that you're associated with or attuned with. So focusing on those areas of life, if you are going to be doing, as I've suggested, some healing work with this full moon there could be an ending to you know a place that you've been living that you're very attached to that brought emotional fulfillment um, but with the jupiter uranus conjunction that we just had in your 10th house your career and work is on fire at this time leo and for the whole rest of the year so be open to the blessings and abundance uh, that wants to come through that the universe is gifting you through your career through your gifts and Leos, you guys are such an important sign at this time because you are ruled by the sun. You are the sign of love and light and play. And at this time that I'm filming this video in April of 2024, you know, all of the outer planets, none of them are in a fire sign. So that's why the energy in the collective can feel so intense and heavy and it can seem like there's not a lot of fun going on. So Leos, with you guys having that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your 10th house, you are being blessed to be in the spotlight, to be in more positions of success and work and career, to share your love and your light and playfulness in whatever respective fields that you work in. So I hope what I said resonated for you Leos and I'm wishing you a very, very happy full moon in Scorpio. Now we move to the Virgo, sun, moon and risings. Virgos, you are having this full moon in Scorpio happen in your third house. And as I've been talking about in this video, if you've been listening so far, uh, this is a major full moon of release, of toxicity and purging. For you, this could have to do with your local community or with friends or siblings or cousins. Those are areas of life that the third house rules. We've got Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, the dispositor of this full moon, in your sixth house in square to the sun and the moon. So there could be, I don't know why I'm hearing work relationships. There could be some issues or dramas with work relationships happening at this time. This can feel like a very busy time for you, having the full moon in your third house, having Pluto in your sixth house, and the Jupiter Uranus conjunction we just had in your ninth house. I'm just feeling intuitively like it feels like there's a lot going on for the Virgos at the same time. So if that is making sense and resonating, resonating for you guys, please let me know in the comments below. I'm feeling intuitively like the Virgos need to take a deep breath and just relax and not overwhelm yourselves at this time. Um, there's a step back, there's a sacred pause that I feel the Virgos need to do because it just feels like there's so much going on with uh, friends, you know, your social life, your work life, your personal life, your emotional well-being. So you could be doing something, you know, the third house rules are local community. Maybe go to an event in your local community 
that is a releasing meditation or a sound bath or whatever resonates with you that could be a really good way to work with this full moon in Scorpio and you know we just have that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your ninth house Jupiter is the ruler of the ninth house of Sagittarius so that is very very positive for you overall in general there's a lot of expansion happening for you Virgos and again I'm just feeling like there is a lot going on so just take it easy don't overextend yourself and make time to be present with this full moon and seeing what it has to offer of what is toxicity in your life that needs to be released and maybe do different kinds of release in group work in your local community. So I love you guys very much and I hope what I said resonated and I'm wishing you a very happy full moon. Okay, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Risings. You guys are having this full moon in Scorpio happen in your second house. And the second house is the Taurus ruled areas of life. Taurus is the opposite sign to Scorpio in astrology. So Libras, you're going through a major release and purging around, you know, toxic values that you may be holding on to, toxic or unhealthy income streams that don't serve you, that aren't actually in alignment with your talents and your soul gifts. And it's also one way that would be really good for you to work with this full moon is to release material possessions because the second house of Taurus rules material possessions from your home and your environments that don't serve you anymore. Um, I'm feeling intuitively, Libra, that, you know, and you are the sign that rules other people. There could be other people's values, other people's um, projections of ways that you should be making money that you've kind of been doing and you guys are realizing at this full moon in Scorpio. Actually, you know, why am I an accountant, for an example? I want to be an artist or I want to be a builder. You can be realizing and it can be illuminated to you the authentic truth, Scorpio rules authentic truth, of how you actually want to be making money um, and be in your values. So that can be very highlighted with you during this full moon. We've got Pluto in your fifth house in a T-square to the sun and the moon. So again, that, that kind of confirms what I was just saying. There's something about your actual soul gifts and talents and enjoyments that I think a lot of the Libras may not be fulfilling something that you actually want to be doing, having to do with your work and having to do with how you make money. So if that makes sense, you guys, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and also the Jupiter Uranus conjunction that we just had happened in your eighth house, which is the eighth house of Scorpio. And so that's blessings and abundance having to do with merging with others, soulmate partnerships, investing, hidden money coming forward. So you, you guys have got the money houses activated with this full moon. There can be revenue streams ending and new ones beginning and you realizing what is actually in alignment with your values to be doing to make money and to be fulfilled in life. So I hope what I said resonated for you Libras. I'm sending you lots and lots of love and happy full moon in Scorpio. Scorpios, now we are at my fellow Scorpio sun, moon and risings. And I, I am a Scorpio sun, if you didn't catch that yet. Scorpios, how are you guys doing? This is a very, very intense full moon in our sign with Pluto in T-square. This is nothing that we can't handle, okay? If you're a Scorpio sun, moon, or rising, you've probably had a very intense life and you've probably had very intense things, experiences, crises that you've had to move through. And it's funny that, okay, and I'm not just saying this, I'm not just saying this just because I'm a Scorpio. This is just something that I'm feeling intuitively right now. I feel like a lot of us Scorpios at the time of this full moon will be needing to support others that need to come into a real deal deep truth about something and we are kind of like the shadow workers or the shadow shamans if you will that i'm feeling like so much energy spirits putting a focus on my throat chakra we need to be honest with the people around us way showers with the people around us of things that might actually be toxic for them 
and helping them to move through that. Now, I'm not saying that Scorpios don't have any work that they need to do on themselves. Scorpios definitely have work to do on this themselves. And with us having this full moon in our sign with Pluto and T-square, there are some very big changes. There are some very big transformations, power shifts and releasing that we can be going through with this being in our first house around our identity and the very foundations of life. So this is very big life changes that can be happening for Scorpio in general. But I'm just feeling intuitively very strongly that there's a message of the Scorpio sun, moon and risings right now are needed to be authentic and in that kind of intense Scorpio, maybe even tough love energy with the people around you. Um, to help them to get in alignment, to help them to release toxicity, or to help them move through shadow work. You know, Scorpio, we're the sign that rules shadow work and intensity. And I don't know about you, Scorpios, but I have heard my whole life from people throughout my whole life, Meg, you're so intense. Oh my God, you're so intense. Can you just chill out? You're being so intense right now. Have you guys heard that also? So we can handle intensity, we can handle healing, we can handle the dark night of the soul. We can handle if someone needs us to help hold space for them and have a really intense conversation. So I hope that's making sense how I say that. And with Pluto in our fourth house in square to the sun and the moon, this can in particular be around family members family members waking up or coming to an intense realization or having a healing crisis where we need to be supportive of them. We've also got Jupiter and Uranus conjunction just happened in our seventh house, which is also talking about other people, okay, and our committed partnerships. So we're being blessed with our love lives, with our business lives. There's beautiful relationships that want to come through in love in particular in committed relationship in general. And one of those shadow side aspects of Scorpio is the fear of betrayal or the fear of trust. Okay, so that can be coming up for a lot of us Scorpios with that Uranus, Jupiter Uranus conjunction we just had in the seventh and these really cool relationships coming forward or opportunities coming forward having to do with others. Scorpios tend to have a feeling of can I trust that person? Are they going to betray me? You know, am I going to have to seek revenge? So know that it's important for us. One of our life lessons is to be open to the blessings of other people and merging with others and trusting and being vulnerable. So I hope what I said resonated to my fellow Scorpios. I love you all. Happy full moon in Scorpio. Now we move to the Sagis, the Sagittarius sun, moon and rising signs. Happy full moon in Scorpio. This is an intense one for you guys. So some of the signs are having this a little bit more intense than others. And for Sagis, you're definitely one of the signs experiencing this more intense than others because this full moon is happening in your 12th house, okay? The 12th house rules the subconscious, the collective unconscious, our dreams, our sleep being behind the scenes. The 12th house of Pisces and the 8th house of Scorpio both rule things that are hidden, okay? So Sagis, likely with this full moon in Scorpio, there's something coming to the surface from the hidden side or from your subconscious self that has been hidden that may even be shocking, okay? Because we've had, we've had that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus in the opposite sign to where this full moon is gonna be happening in your 12th house. So there's something likely to be shocking Kind of coming up for you about a realization of your own soul self maybe even past lives the 12th house can have to do with past lives so for you guys i would say doing spiritual healing work meditation energy healing is a fantastic way to work with this full moon there's something i'm hearing spirits say something very deep and intense and mysterious that wants to be revealed to the sagis about who they truly are on the soul, soul level, who they come from, and what their gifts and magic are. So I'm just hearing that intuitively from spirit right now. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that we just had was in your sixth house, so you're being blessed in the areas of life of health and day-to-day -day work. There's beautiful new opportunities happening in those areas for you guys, Sagis, but be open 
that's in general, but be open with this full moon in particular to the magic. 12th house has to do with magic and spirituality and the metaph metaphysical. Scorpio also has to do with those things. So be in the magic, be open to the hidden. And, you know, spending some time alone or, you know, uh, kind of behind the scenes would be a good way to work with this full moon as well and see what it has to offer. So I'm wishing you guys a very happy full moon and I'm sending you lots of love. The Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Risings. This full moon in Scorpio that we're having on April 23rd is happening in your 11th house. And this is a major full moon about release of toxicity, purging what no longer serves, and things being revealed to us. So for you, with this being in your 11th house, this has to do with the future. 11th house rules the future, and our friends, our like-minded community, groups we're associated with, and our dreams and our goals for the future. So there could be friendships coming to a relation, uh, friendships coming to a release point. There could be group associations coming to a release point. And you Capricorns are very, very powerful. Okay, that is one of the most powerful and no bullshit signs of the whole zodiac. And you want to be having friends and people around you and group associations that honor your value that don't make you feel bad for wanting to be successful, for wanting to be, uh, you know, hard workers. I'm hearing spirits say there could be totally new career opportunities, career paths coming through for you guys having to do with the age of Aquarius and having to do with moving into the future with this full moon. So that's just something I'm intuitively feeling right now. Uh, you know, the 11th house rules networking and events. So one way to work with this energy would be to go to a healing event, group meditation, group ecstatic dance, something in that regard that resonates with you in a group format. Uh, we just had this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in the fifth house. You did in the fifth house, which is the house of Leo. So that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in general now and for the next few months and rest of the year is blessing you with new joy of life, new creativity, new ways of showcasing your gifts and talents. So there's there's a theme with you guys of very new and fresh energy wanting to come forward. And of course, we've just had Pluto and Capricorn ever since 2008. And this is the last year that we will have Pluto and Capricorn from September to November. And you guys are gonna feel a total energy shift as we go into 2025 but i feel like you're starting to be blessed with that new energy coming in now releasing the toxicity and the very hard crisis experiences that you you guys have been going through since 2008 with pluto in your sign so i hope what i said resonated with you and i'm sending lots and lots of love your way happy full moon Whew. okay we got two more signs left aquarius sun moon and risings Happy full moon in Scorpio. You guys are having this full moon happen in your 10th house. And this is the house of work, career, being seen publicly, our legacy and our parental elder figures. So Aquarians, some of you can be going through an ending with your work or career or how you're being seen publicly. There could be a major ending or completion having happened with a parental figure or authority elder figure in your life. Aquarians, you guys are the way showers of the age of Aquarius. And it's so funny when I do my personal astrology consultations, because every time someone has a lot of Aquarius in their chart, they either are really into astrology and want to be an astrologer. They work in the technology field. They're an inventor or they work with, you know, like-minded community and bringing people together. So Aquarians, this full moon in Scorpio is bringing to light your legacy. And are you living your legacy at this moment? What do you need to do? What do you need to release to be in a career path or a way of being service to the public that is a part of that future vision, that future age of Aquarius that you are a way shower of, you know? A lot of you are getting into, a lot of you Aquarians are getting into the alternative healing technology field, inventing things yourself. So it's important for you with this full moon in Scorpio to be honest about your work life. Is that something where you actually feel like you are being your innovative genius Aquarian self 
and being a way shower or not, okay? Pluto is in your first house in a T-square to this moon, so there can be power struggles with bosses or even parents or people that you considered a teacher or an elder in your life. You are moving past something really big having to do with your purpose and what you are here to actually do and realizing energies that you no longer need to feed with your work and career and how you're publicly being seen and who you consider an elder in your life. We just had that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus in your fourth house. So that's blessing you with positive energy towards your family, your home life, your emotional stability, and the homeland that you come from as well. So there's things blessing you in your stability to be those expansive Aquarians in the age of Aquarius and be those leaders in a lot of the new career fields. So I hope what I said resonated Aquarians and I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Happy full moon. Last but not least is the magical Pisces, sun, moon and risings, my fellow water signs. Pisces, how are you guys doing? We've got Neptune in your sign. We've got Saturn in your sign. We've now got this full moon in Scorpio, your sister sign. Very, very intense. You're lucky that it's happening in your ninth house. This is one of the lighter houses in astrology. So Pisces, of course, you're going to be feeling it very strongly because Scorpio is a sister sign to you. And we've got Pluto in your 12th house, your home house in square to this moon but it's not as heavy as it is for some of the other signs. The ninth house has to do with our beliefs, our higher learning pursuits, and our relationship to expansion and our higher consciousness. So you are releasing things that no longer serve you having to do with those areas of life. There can be big beliefs that aren't actually your beliefs that I'm hearing spirits say were programmed into you from a religion or from another person or institution that you are releasing at this time. I'm feeling spirits say that this is a very empowering full moon for you where you are re remembering your magic and your empowerment and who you actually are. These are just words that I'm hearing right now. Uh, the best way for you to be working with this full moon is to be evaluating your beliefs and things that you are putting time into learning, higher learning pursuits, and be honest with yourself about is that actually something that you need to do moving forward that is empowering, Scorpio rules empowerment, or is that a dead energy? Is that over? Is that something that you don't need to be feeding anymore? Around this full moon, some of you Pisces may be traveling in foreign locations or faraway places or making a decision to go on a trip. And we've just had that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your third house, which is the house of short distance travel. So I think there can be a lot of movement going on for Pisces uh, travel in sacred sites around this time can be really good for you. Uh, traveling to sacred sites, whether they're places close to you, short distance travel or foreign distance travel can be very good to you at this time and over the coming months. 